Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Keith. This is Alting Tenerife. It's in the air. You feel that it's bringing back images. sort of alluded to in the last uh, vlog uh, yesterday evening when we went out didn't quite go to plan but did end up being a really different night very interesting night uh, somebody ended up with stitches uh, or somebody ended up in stitches no actually somebody actually ended up with stitches uh, I'll tell you about as we walk along I'm actually up down I'm down on uh, Torbiscus Beach at the moment so I'll turn you around. Yeah, so we were in Scallywags last night and then we decided we'd head home and just have have one for the ditch as they say or one for the road, whatever expression you want to use. Uh, so we headed into our local uh, Soul City just beside the apartment and when we arrived there was an elderly lady in her late 70s uh, blood on her top a few people around her trying to stop the bleeding on her head uh, and as anyone who knows me uh, or knows that I used to be a physio so I suppose not to, not that I'm a doctor but I had the, probably the most knowledge of all the drunks that were there so it was a case of I'll have a little look and see if she's okay uh she she wasn't actually she had did have a nasty gash which needed stitching so i think it was her son or son-in-law but uh, they took her off and uh got a phone call later on to say that yeah she had needed stitches and but she was fine she was there was no damage done. in fairness it was a, she slipped on a step or on, a, on a edge of a door an aluminium door nasty the best of times but uh yeah so she she Nasty little gash in the back of her head, bless her. But uh, I was more concerned because she wasn't she wasn't going. Typical person of that era. Uh, oh, and Grant, and Grant, love, won't be bother. I'll be fine. Won't be. Fine. I'll be. Won't be. I won't be. Won't be a bother on anybody. I'll be grand. But thankfully, as uh, said, they persuaded. We persuaded her to go and get a check because they say it needed stitching, and I was more concerned. Of her age more than anything else uh but yeah so good news she was fine and hopefully i'll meet her today because she lives or stays in the area where where we are so yeah hopefully i'll meet up with her today and see how she got on but we got chatting to some people uh i'm not going to say their names because we, we we spoke quite a, for quite a while that's the reason why i've got a bit of a hangover this morning is i don't normally drink as much as they did last night but I was kind of enjoying the conversation and during the conversation we were talking about oh, all sorts of stuff from rugby to me doing physio on my day uh, to mental health and I'm very open about my mental health I have no issues talking to people about where I was how bad I was and the vast improvements I've made through, I suppose being correctly diagnosed with mental health issues that you, once you know what you have, it's so much easier to manage it, to deal with it. And I suppose not to be ashamed of it because I'm very proud of how far I've come uh, from the person I was to what I am now, <clears throat> even down to doing this. I mean, this wouldn't have been me 20 years ago, 10 years ago four years three four years ago this i've only diagnosed officially three years ago with the condition that i have and in the conversation that we're having the the woman uh the, from the group that were left when that woman went to that went to the hospital one of them in the group mentioned and said oh god i'd love to talk to you about this properly uh, i have things going on in my head that don't make sense and I'd only been discussing it with with herself about how 
I suppose how to explain how your head works or how my head worked. There's a, a, a bar in Tenerife called uh, Bar Inferno. Uh, it's down in Los Cristianos. And it's, it's a steampunk bar, themed bar. So when you go inside, it's manic. Uh, there's clips from horror films, there's, there's stage props from horror films. I've actually done a small vlog on it, and you'll see it in my, on, my, on, my, on my back stuff. Uh, bar Inferno. Have a look at it. Because that was my brain up until I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And I remember the night we went into it, and I loved it. It's, it's a really bizarre, quirky sort of place. But it's, it's slightly manic, it's slightly, slightly lunacy about it. Uh, and I was sitting outside with my partner, we're having our drinks, and I had this epiphany, for want of a better word, as I said to her, this is what my brain is. This is me now. In there, that lunacy, the music, the manic music, the, you know, all these different scenes on the wall and it's quite a dark place and it, it, my, my head was a very dark place so and here i am now sitting outside and i have a drink sitting in front of me or and i sitting enjoying life and in the background behind me is that old part of my head and it's the only way i can describe as an analogy of how things were whereas now i'm still aware that that's there and I know that that's there. I know that, that that bar is still there. But I'm on the other side of it. And I, I don't choose to go back into it anymore. I don't go there anymore. I can walk up and get a drink and come outside. But sometimes it does come back to you. But you have to fight it. You have to deal with it. So you have to learn. So my point is that you have to learn skills to protect yourself from uh, mental health issues. But the first thing you have to do is accept that you've got them. And this person last night was literally knocking on the door of, you know, I'm after finding someone, a sort of kindred spirit who has some understanding of what uh, I'm going through. And I really want to talk about this, but their partner didn't want them to. And they kind of closed them, closed them down uh, from talking. And they actually, at least four times they kept coming back to that oh God, I'd love to sit and talk to you about this and I said to them look just my advice is just talk to somebody if you don't talk to me or if we don't meet again uh, just just talk to somebody you've taken the first step you, you feel that there's something wrong you think there's something in there that's not right and you need to find it and get it out and you do that's the thing you just have to find what it is it's like fighting a demon in the dark if you don't know what it is you can't fight it and if you can't see it you can't fight it so you have to first off recognize it see it and then you can develop skills to fight that and that's my thing uh, i know the person's not watching this because they don't they don't do youtube they don't have it they don't even have facebook uh, i did mention it to them that I would uh, do a vlog on it and uh, so if you are listening or if you have decided to sign up and had a look at this this is for you and my advice still stands I spent my whole life as from a child very young very early uh, contemplating suicide uh, most of my life from a very early age uh, and it wasn't until three years ago when I signed myself in on the request of my partner to a psychiatric unit for help that I actually got the help I needed and subsequently turned a massive corner to the life that I live now, which is pretty close to perfect from a mental health point of view and most point of view in fairness, let's be honest. Uh, I'm very appreciative of my life and all the things I can do and do, this being one of them, the privilege of being able to walk along here and point out, sorry, Ted's, that's cracking Italian restaurant, absolutely cracking Italian restaurant. Uh, so yeah, I feel very privileged to be able to do this, but 
I do it because somebody cared enough to push me in the right direction. And that's the thing. And that's what I want to sort of end this on. And that is, if you have somebody in your life who is calling out or crying out for for mental health assistance, for want of a better word, uh, and it is kind of that. I mean, I, I'm not... I'm not qualified from the point of view. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, okay, well, I am a mental health officer in the company I work for because it's such a big issue nowadays with people that companies are paying far more attention to it than they would have done years ago. And we actually have six or seven mental health officers. We, we do courses every year on how to deal with people who have issues with mental health, where to guide and where to send them. And you advise and point in the direction you're you're a signpost you're not a counselor but and that's why sometimes i, I do these vlogs and i don't want to be a, do a, sort of a downer vlog maybe it's the weather maybe it's the fact there's no sun shining on me at the moment but that's kind of it's a good analogy the reason you need to learn coping mechanisms is that when you're in that position where you have got mental health issues a lot of your days will be okay, they'll be good, the sun is shining. So you, you need to cope then, but you need to learn to cope better when it's like this, when the clouds are over and it's a little bit overcast, that's when you really need to learn coping skills for, for whatever mental health issue it is that you have. Mine can't be medicated, so I meditate three times a day. Uh, I exercise over my bike, it's great for clearing your head, but I do three times a day, morning, afternoon when I come in from work, and evening, headphones on, some sort of meditative music, and I just chill and zone out for half an hour to an hour, and say three times a day. And it keeps, it literally keeps me sane. So, that's what I'm suggesting. If you feel you have got an issue, there's something there, if it's niggling at you, and you're not sure, get it checked out. Just talk to somebody, talk to your local GP, whatever. But get help because there's so many wasted lives from people who weren't uh, guided in the right direction. And I could very easily have been one of those. I was on one occasion told not to discuss feeling suicidal because it was upsetting family members. You know, and that's not the advice people need. The advice people need is to talk about it. Talk about it, scream about it, shout about it. it, it the, the, when we remove the stigma of something it's less it's where people are less afraid of it so if you take nothing else out of this vlog other than that i'm delighted because hopefully somebody sees this or listens to it or is guided towards it and thinks do you know what i'm worth it i'm worth the effort and you have to be the one that makes that decision not somebody else you have to accept that you're worth you're worth saving you're worth you're worth fighting for so that's it i won't say rant over because it wasn't a rant but uh yeah just look after yourselves look after each other and if you can't give people advice just do that just advise them to get help advise them point them in the right direction uh there is no stigma attached to it it's not it, mental health is not a dirty word uh we save a lot of lives if we stop thinking like that so if you like what you see thank you to new subscribers and I've picked up quite a few new subscribers in the last couple of weeks welcome to everybody and I really hope you're enjoying what you're seeing so hit the like hit the subscribe subscribe hit the bell for notification and I'll talk to you soon take care